New Jersey distilleries have a rich history dating back to the colonial era. And distillers in New Jersey tell me that they owe it to the rich farming history, soil and climate to create the perfect Jersey spirit. The Garden State is, you know, that's our name for a reason. The distillery industry has always been fruitful in New Jersey with all of the fresh vegetation that the Garden State has to offer. We're the Garden State, so we have uh, some really nice grain. In fact, the Garden State was home to the nation's first distillery, Laird & Company, back in 1780. They started back in the colonial era, I would say around the late 1700s, and then grew. And by 1835, there were 388 distilleries. It was amazing. We met with the founder of Asbury Park Distillery, Andrew Karras, that took over the family business that his grandfather started during Prohibition. Prohibition came around and he ended up becoming a bootlegger in Patterson. You know, it all goes back to the days of the mafia and they had boats going up and down the shore, bringing the alcohol in and this was really where it happened. And born out of the Prohibition era, you better believe that the distillery industry has many, many rules that they have to abide by, including that they are only allowed to sell their spirits and no one else's, unlike any other bar. So you have to deal with the state, the federal, and the town level. So there's three entities you have to keep happy. Uh, and pretty much from start to finish, there's always a reason to quit. And even more of a reason to quit when COVID-19 hit, especially for founder of Garden State Distillery, who opened their doors on March 15th. Opening up on March 15th was, uh, yeah, that was in my blind spot. I didn't see that happening. And we trickled in some business over the next few months with to-go cocktails and some bottle sales. A lot of you know friends and family came in to support. Many distilleries had to pivot their business to stay open and mass-produced hand sanitizer during the pandemic. We were able to distribute it to hospitals. Um, a lot of the elderly were able to get it. They came here and we also sent it over to nursing homes. Um, First responders, uh, fire department, police, they all came here and we delivered it to them. So it was a need we were able to fill and be able to help out, do our part to help the community. Fortunately, these distillery owners tell me that business is picking back up. We're really not trying to compete with bars and restaurants. That's the, the number one thing we try to do here. We're, we're not trying to, uh, to take away business for anyone else. We close in an earlier time. We tell all of our customers, go to these local liquor stores and restaurants, try our cocktails there. Certain grapes to produce different flavors. How does that go with distillery? What ingredients? Yeah, so uh, well, you could use grapes, you could use any fermentable substrate, so anything that has sugar or access to sugar. So typically for bourbon, is what we're making today, uh, is made with at least 51% corn. Uh, then you're either rye or wheat, and then some barley for enzyme activity to break down the starches in those grains to sugars. And then once they get them to sugars, then we ferment them with yeast. According to New Jersey law, distilleries can offer tours and tastings and even on-site sales. But if you're hungry, you'll have to go support a local small business and have your food delivered here. Reporting from Tom's River for Jersey Matters, I'm Kimberly Kravitz.